Hi, my name is Jenna Saylor, and this is my physics lab report number two on the motion of a falling object. Starting out, we're going to discuss the purposes of the lab, and they were to capture the motion of an object dropped from rest straight downwards, to analyze the motion of an object in tracker, to construct a computational model that only includes the effect of gravity, and then to construct a second computational model that includes the effect of both gravity and drag, then to compare the computational models to the observed data and draw conclusions, to discuss potential error, and then finally to discuss the what-if questions. Some important concepts to understand are Newton's second law, which is net force equals mass times acceleration, and as our object is being dropped from its initial height at rest, it's gaining speed due to the force of gravity, and later in the report we will discuss how drag affected that acceleration. Another important concept to know is the momentum principle, which is F net equals change in momentum over change in time, or momentum equals mass times velocity, and basically momentum is a single applied force over a period of time which causes an object to gain speed and accelerate. Another very important concept specific to this lab is turbulent drag, which is a force whose direction is always opposite to the direction of the object's motion and whose magnitude is proportional to the square of the object's speed. And then finally we have velocity and acceleration, and velocity is the change in displacement over change in time, while acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So the system in this experiment was the apple, the hand, and the table, and the surroundings were all the space around it. The initial conditions were an initial velocity of zero meters per second and an initial height of 28.8 centimeters. And finally, the observed model had a smaller acceleration than model one and model two, and we'll get more into that later. Next is the actual experiment. The first step was to record the motion of the object, the apple slice, being dropped from rest in the one direction. Then the video was uploaded to Tracker and the results were plotted into a graph as shown below. And then finally, an online graphing program, Desmos, was used to overlay the three different trials and compare results and we'll get more into that step later. But right here, as you can see, the apple is being dropped from rest. And if you look at the actual center of mass plots, you can see they get further and further apart to show that it's gaining more and more speed in between each time stamp. And then down here, you can see the position versus time graph is slightly curved and the velocity versus time graph is not constant, but is at a downward incline, which means that there is a constant downwards acceleration. Okay. Next, we have computer model number one. Here's the code. Some of the code was more tailored towards my actual object. I changed the mass towards the mass of the apple slice. I changed the initial position to the starting height, delta t to the time second the tracker. And then right here, the total time was the total time it took for it to drop to the ground, force of gravity in the F net vector. And then I used kinematic equations here to fit in the position update formulas and velocity update formulas to get the most accurate results. And then as you can see here, with the gravity only modeled, the results look pretty similar to our initial experiment. Um, the position versus time graph is also curved and then the velocity is a downward sloping line. Next we have model 2 which is the code that counts drag and using the drag formula that we discussed on the first slide I found B which was 0 0.025 and then using B in updating these highlighted lines down below I was able to get the new code which produced these graphs and we still have very similar looking graphs. It is a curved position versus time and a pretty linear velocity versus time. So the observed experiment had a smaller acceleration than the two computer models. Model one, which only accounted for gravity, had the largest acceleration out of all the trials due to the lack of gra drag and other forces counteracting the motion. Model two, which was gravity and drag, had a smaller acceleration than model one, but a larger acceleration than the observed model. And this will later be discussed when discussing present error in the experiment. The terminal velocity, which happens when the drag force is equal in magnitude to the gravitational force, causes the net force to be zero, and the object would follow the constant velocity at this point. There is never a point where terminal velocity is reached within the tested experiments. However, if the gravity and drag model continued in motion for a little more time, it would have had a constant velocity near the end, as you can see here, because it's starting to sort of even out and reach its final speed. Um, and finally, if the object was initially thrown downwards rather than being dropped, the terminal velocity would be reached at a faster rate due to the more rapid acceleration and eventually to the final speed because it would just gain all of its speed much quicker. Errors. Because the observed experiment was not performed in perfect conditions, there was definitely room for error. There was also some rotation of the object as it fell, which took the linear speed away from it. And my limited knowledge of coding was yet another source of error in the computer models because I could have had more accurate code if I had more knowledge and went more into depth 
in the actual coding part. And then finally, in the future, a more precise video tracking system could have been used to ensure the results are more accurate or more points could have even been plotted on the graph to make it more accurate. As mentioned in class, the smaller range of time that you track an object in, the more accurate the final results are going to be because of the summation. Thank you.